Tonight, the National Broadcasting Company presents its new dramatic series, Author's Playhouse, radio adaptations of great modern short stories, tales written by acknowledged masters of their craft. We are privileged to open our series with a tale from one of America's foremost writers, Stephen Vincent Benet, poet, critic, novelist, short story writer. In Elementals, our story tonight, he departs from his widely known historical fiction and offers a vivid and dramatic study of conflicting personal philosophies. Author's Playhouse presents Elementals by Stephen Vincent Benet. I don't believe I understand. You but... have been contending that the two lovers described by Guicciardini, Antonio and Lucetta, that their love was of lesser intensity. You say that some people in love could withstand Alessandro's test of elemental hunger. I'm certain of it. I wonder, I wonder very much, Mr. Latimer, just what people you mean. Oh, dozens. There are many who could. Most people. Or half of them at any rate. More coffee, Mr. Latimer. It's still warm. Yes, thank you. Uh, you chose to avoid a question I put to you a moment ago, but I'll try again. Would you venture to make the test? I don't know, Mr. Slake. The premise is preposterous, of course. Such a thing couldn't happen uh, now. But uh, suppose it could, Mr. Latimer. Suppose it could. Would you be willing to wager, oh, your future professorship, say... Would you be willing to wager that against uh, $10,000 on the ability of you and one woman to endure Alessandro's test? Yes. You're wholly certain of that? Yes. Very well, then. Suppose we try it. What? No, really, I'm not suggesting anything so impossible as it seems. Your suggestion would be fantastic, but weren't so insolent, Mr. Slick. A man of my means often may venture what others would consider uh, fantastic. If you'd made your insane offer to myself alone, I'd have jumped at it. Ten thousand dollars, I should say. But to ask Miss... Oh, of course, of course, Miss... Miss Vane. Uh, Miss Vane is to be considered, of course. She could not bear it, of course. Oh, Catherine would view your proposal as I do. It's absurd. Yes, Catherine. Then I may take it that you're turning down my offer. You may. Catherine Vane. Oh, you wouldn't know her. She's working in the secretary's office at the university. Ah, yes. Catherine Vane. Secretary's office. Columbia University. What are you doing? Oh, just a notation, Mr. Latimer. I should like very much to find out what Miss Vane would say to this uh, trifling experiment of mine. Brandy, Mr. Latimer. <laughs> English department. You, Sherry? Oh, hello, Kathy. I was just going to tell I know you. about it, Sherry. John Flake was just here. Oh, Sherry, isn't it wonderful? Wonderful? Kathy, you didn't say you'd be willing to... Stay in your office. I'll be right over. Just think, Sherry. It's everything we want. Everything now. And it's ours if we only have the little courage to take it. A little courage? Ten thousand dollars. It means we could marry at once. We could have a home and children safely, without fear, without having to spend every summer tutoring. Just how did Slake describe the test to you? Well, he said we would be in adjoining rooms on the third floor of his house. There would be a glass window between us so that we could see each other but not talk together. I should imagine that touch would appeal to him. We would have three books, the Bible, the Koran, the Zenda Vesta, all the water we need, but no food. If I had only myself to consider, I'd accept in a minute. Just seven days, Sherry. You don't know what seven days of ceaseless hunger is. I don't. We can't even surmise. And if we should fail... My love for you is so great that the possibility of failure doesn't enter my thinking. Did Slake tell you of the climax of the seven-day fast? Yes, he did. After seven days of starvation, seven days of ceaseless hunger, we'd be brought to the same room. And a piece of bread would be placed between us. Kathy, it's ridiculous. 
You didn't read the translation of the 16th century pamphlet by Guicciardini that I made for Slate. Only part of it. You should read the chapter on the merry diversions of His Highness Prince Alessandro. I don't see what that... Let me finish, darling. In his court, there were two lovers, Antonio and Lucetta. And their love for each other was court legend it was so intense. Prince Alessandro challenged them to make precisely the same test Slake is asking us to try. Were you discussing it with him? Is that how he happened to make the proposal? Uh, uh, let me finish. On the tenth day, theirs was a ten-day fast, Alessandro and two attendants went to one of the adjoining compartments. The girl is not sleeping, Your Highness. Her eyes opened when I touched her, but there was no recognition in them, and I knew her well. They are not so weak that they cannot move, I trust. Of that I cannot say, Your Highness. The sight of this bread is quite likely to result in strange behavior. Antonio. Antonio. Food. Please, for the love of God, food. You hold your beloved Lucetta in your arms, Antonio. Food. Please give me food. Rinaldo, could this bread have more attraction than the beautiful Lucetta to this most faithful of all the suitors in my court? It would seem so, Your Highness. Raise the partition, and we shall see. Uh, yes, Your Highness. <coughs> See, Antonio, see what I have in my hand. Bread. You would like to have it, would you not? Bread. Bread. Give it, I'm so hungry. Luketa, there is bread on the floor for you. Bread. Bread for me. My no. bread. My bread. My mine. Bread. Mine. 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 Your Highness, each will strangle the other if we do not separate them. Most faithful in love. Yes, tear them apart. Mine. What an unbeautiful picture. <laughs> Most faithful. It took the combined strength of the three to tear Antonio and Lucetta from their death grip. Sherwood Latimer. Do you think we could be like that? Sherry, I'm disappointed in you. Three days of this boredom and I'm biting my wrist of this boredom and I'm biting my wrist just to watch the little white dints appear and fade away. No more of that, Brother Latimer. You had better count the bluebirds on the wallpaper again. Wonder how Kathy is. She wouldn't count bluebirds on the wallpaper to pass away the time. Not Kathy. She would lose herself in reading. The sensible thing. Why don't you read, Fra Latimer? Better than counting birds. Those idiotic bluebirds. No occupation for a sane man. Sane man? Even if I should doubt my own sanity, there's Catherine. Catherine is sane. That's severity. Three days without food, my head's whirling with doubts. But it isn't three days yet. It's been two and a half days. Daylight's fading. Yes, just about two and a half days. Kathy will be expecting to see me at the window, so I'll just... Oh? Oh, I'm getting a little weak. There. Did too much pacing about these first days. From now on, I'll conserve my strength. Just as I thought. She's lost herself in reading. Good evening, darling. Good evening, darling. Uh huh, good evening. That smile, she's just the same. Or just a little paler. Yes, she is. A little paler. I? I'm fine. F-I-N-E. Fine. Uh, don't get up. Uh, don't get up. Save your strength. Strength. She would get up just to show me she's all right. Yes, dear. I can see... Pointing out words in the Bible, what a maddening way to converse when we have so much to say to each other. Yes. Yes, I see. Good evening, dear. Her smile is weak. I'll bet mine is weaker. I mustn't let it be. Wait. I marked the pages in my Bible, some things I want to show Kathy. Here. Here. I marked the places. I'm sure I did. Yes, yes, here. Look, dearest, this... Eyes closed. Her eyes are closed again. That smile, how like her. Lord, if only I could get to her just for a kiss, a few words. Look, dearest. 
The lions do lack and suffer hunger. Lions do lack and suffer hunger. <laughs> yes, Sherry. We do. We lions. <laughs> we lions. Oh, Sherry. Sherry, it's not my hunger. It, it's your hunger that tortures me. If only I could tell you how much stronger my love is than this, this gnawing hunger. Where's that sentence I was going to point out to him? Here. This, Sherry. Read this. Happy shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Shalt thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Yes, I see. What's that she's underscoring with her thumbnail? She means that as a signature. Thy wife. Let me come here. Blake. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, after he's gone. Good evening, Mr. Latimer. Good evening, Mr. Sleek. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose, Mr. Latimer. Everything entirely satisfactory, Mr. Sleek. How charming. You're admirable guests indeed, Mr. Latimer, you and Miss Vane. You make so little demand on one's hospitality. I'm glad you find us so. Uh, aren't you concealing something behind your back, Mr. Latimer? Eh? Oh, yes, the Bible. I've been reading. Yes, reading. It must pass the time. You do find time heavy on your hands, do you not, Mr. Latimer? I have been merely... May I have the book? As a matter of fact, Miss Vane and I have contrived a way to communicate. Using the book... The book, Mr. Latimer, may I have it? Thank you. I didn't overlook the possibility that you might converse by pointing to words and phrases in the books I've given you. It's quite all right, though. I'm not Alessandro. No, you're not. I imagine you find that means of communication quite lacking in spontaneity and uh, warmth. Hmm. Well, what is this, Mr. Latimer? It was just nervousness. It was done unconsciously. You do mean the... Yes, I do mean the teeth marks on the leather binding. That is something I hadn't reckoned with. I certainly hadn't considered eating a leather book binding. Of course, I'm sure you didn't. Uh, Then you won't mind if I tear the leather cover from this volume. Shame, of course, but then you wouldn't want to eat dyed leather, no matter how hungry you got. It would be terribly unpalatable. As I said, I hadn't considered doing it. Oh, yes, then I've helped you by removing the temptation. Thoughtful of you. I'll drop in on you tomorrow morning at the usual time, Mr. Latimer. Good night. Good night? Slake. John Slake, why did I listen to him? Let him persuade me to do this. Oh, Kathy, we'll beat him. We'll erase that smug smile of his. We'll win, Kathy. We'll win. We have to. Good morning. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose, Mr. Latimer. Everything entirely satisfactory, Mr. Slate. Good evening, Miss Vane. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose. Perfectly, Mr. Slate. Good morning, Mr. Latimer. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose. Everything entirely satisfactory. Kathy? 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 She's asleep. It can't be anything else. She is asleep. I shouldn't waken her. But if she isn't asleep, she must be. She must be. What else could... Kathy! Kathy, darling! Oh. Oh. She was just asleep, and I've wakened her. That smile. Brave. Brave. Don't get up. Don't get up. I just wanted to say... I love you. And I do, I do so much. How could I let her go through this? I'm all right. Fine. Don't worry about me. Don't worry. I must get away from the panel or she'll try to come up over to me. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, why did I let you go through this? Why? I never knew that hunger could be like this. And I love her. I love her and I let her do this crazy thing. 
Why did I? What happened to me? I can't remember. Five days without food. Five days with... Is it five days? Oh, God, it could be four. I don't remember. I can't remember. It could be four days. No, I'm sure it's five. Five days. Yes, five days. But I could be wrong. If it's four, I shall ask Slate when he comes in. And if it had been only four days, then I will tell him that because I fear the effect this starvation will have on Kathy, that I'm giving up the contest, that I'm completely resigned to serving him for the ten years. Ten years. But there's nothing else to do. I can't stand it knowing how Kathy's suffering. I'll serve my ten years to the devil with my career. I'll have Kathy. Oh, Kathy, Kathy! <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Latimer. Good evening. Oh, now, you needn't stand if you're weak, Mr. Latimer. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose. I wished for you at dinner tonight. I really wished for you. The fish was perfection. A baked bluefish, you know. And the roast... Stop! Oh, dear, dear, I forgot. My apologies. So it has really begun to touch you, my elemental. Not more than I had expected on the fifth day. This is the fifth day, isn't it? Don't you know, Mr. Latimer? Yes, I do. This is the fifth day. I'm right. Perhaps. Though it may be only the fourth. But tell me, you devil, tell me just that! I'm afraid we shall have to withdraw from the contest, Mr. Slate. Really? When only a few more hours would have brought us to the most interesting part. Yes. May I ask why? Catherine! I presume you have discussed this matter through the partition in your painfully slow way. Miss Bain doesn't know of my decision. She's brave. She'd never give up. But I can't allow her to be tortured this way. According to our contract, Mr. Latimer, both must agree to the withdrawal. One cannot speak for the other. Damn our agreement and you, you devil! <laughs> I shall ask Miss Vane how she feels about your decision. What an exhibition of temper you gave, Mr. Latimer. What a pitiful exhibition. Miss Vane. Miss Vane. Yes? I wasn't asleep. Everything's perfectly satisfactory. Oh, a little <laughs> matter, Miss Vane. Mr. Latimer is concerned over your condition and has asked me to inform you that he will agree to withdraw if you insist. Everything is perfectly satisfactory. One more day or two at the very most. I wish I could be sure if it's two. Oh, Kathy, if you could be spared this. It's like the pressure of a dull knife against the pit of my stomach. It must be worse for Kathy. It must be. She's thinking of me. She thinks of what the ten years might do to me. Oh, Kathy, don't think of that. It's all right. I'll have you. This is the sixth day. Just one more. If I'm right, if this is the sixth day. Oh, I'm so weak. He who sleeps dines, the French say. I'll see. I'll see. And tomorrow when I wake, if I sleep, if I sleep. I'm not asleep, but I feel different. And it isn't a dream, because I'd not even think it might be a dream, if it were a dream. It isn't really a dream, because I know it's a dream. Then it is a dream. Kathy. You see, Kathy, it isn't a dream, because I can stop it whenever I want to. Whenever I want to. I'm so hungry, Sherry. So hungry. You needn't be. This is my dream, and I can do in it whatever I choose. Only it isn't really a dream, because I can control everything. We'll go to a restaurant. Yes, let's. This is a restaurant. Here's the waiter. Tell him what you'd like. Everything perfectly all right, I suppose, Mr. Latimer. Everything entirely satisfactory, waiter. That isn't the waiter, Sherry. That's Mr. Slate. <laughs> In my dream, he's the waiter. I'm not really asleep, so things are as I want them to be. One of the wealthiest men in the world, Kathy. Our waiter. Don't you know me, Mr. Latimer? You were John Slake. But now you're our waiter. 
Non sai dove sei, Antonio? Certainly. We're in your restaurant, and my name is not Antonio. Tell his highness my name, Catherine. Catherine! 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 Lei non ti sente, Antonio. She can hear me. Non è possibile. It's not impossible. She's right here. This is a dream. I know it's a dream. And I can do in it whatever I choose, and so can Lucchetta. Aspetta un momento. In just a moment. Cerco di muovere la finestra. I will have the glass partition removed. Allora vedremo quanto è grande questo tuo amore. Then we shall see how great is this love of yours. Vedremo come si paragone in competizione con mie forze elementari. We elementari. shall see how it pairs in competition with my elementals. Yes, we shall. We shall. Lucchetta and I will prove you wrong, Your Highness. You translated the pamphlet for me. You know the ending of this tale. Oh, you are confused. Guicciardini wrote of your merry diversions. I am Antonio. No, I am confused also. I am Sherwood Latimer. You are... Princess Alessandro. No, no, you're not going to muddle me again. You are John Slake. Abasta. Enough of this. C'hai fame. You are hungry. Guarda per la finestra. How can I look through the partition? See Lucchetta's hungry eyes. That is not Lucchetta. That is Kathy, my Kathy. And her eyes are not hungry. She won't recognize you when I put the bread between you. Again, you're wrong. This is my dream. Nothing happens unless I want it to happen. Raise the partition. Kathy! You do know me, don't you? Say you do. Of course I do, my silly Sherry. Here comes the waiter again with our order. Oh, I'm so hungry, Sherry, darling, so hungry. You ordered uh, the bread, I believe. No, you fool, we ordered steaks. Steaks? Yes, sir. Here is your bread. But I tell you, I'll we... I'll the bread. You may have the steak when it comes, all the steak. Give me the bread. Sherry. I'll eat the bread. Sherry, give me half. No. Give me half, it's Sherry. Mine. Sherry, I'm hungry. It's I'm so hungry, it's Sherry. It's mine. The bread is mine. It's mine. The bread is mine. The bread is... Oh. Oh, what a horrible dream. I thought I was in control. I was sure I was in control. But when I saw the bread... Oh, Kathy, I took the bread from you. I took the bread from Kathy. Oh, Kathy, Kathy, there won't be enough hours in a lifetime to make it up to you for all this torture I've let you endure. It was a dream. It couldn't have been that... No, that wasn't the test. In the test, my head will be clear... But what if I'm not in control of my behavior? What if I do as I did in that phantasm, that nightmarish terror? Oh, Kathy, give me strength. Well... I'm going to get the broth. Don't walk away from me. Well? What is their condition? The man's a little stronger, but neither of them can walk. Can they talk? If you can call, making sounds, talking, the man can. Very well. You needn't bother to bring them the broth. However, I have this to give them. Bread? But they haven't eaten anything for a week. You don't want to give them solid food. When the test is completed, they will be in your tender care, Miss Warren. Would you like to watch this? No. Yes, yes, I would. I might be needed. Come in, then. Yes, you might be needed. Food. Yes, you might be needed. In the previous test of this order, which took place in the 16th century, it was necessary for three strong men to tear the two lovers apart when the bread was placed between them. They were locked in a death struggle over a piece of bread probably not so large as this. I don't like this. I believe your salary is sufficiently large enough to compensate for that. If word of this ever got to the ears of the authorities... It won't. Will it, Warren? No. No, sir. Food. Why am I so hungry? Are you awake, Mr. Latimer? Food. Please, food. That voice. I hate that voice. Yes, food. In just a moment, Mr. Latimer. I hate that voice. Whose voice is it? Don't you know me, Mr. Latimer? Who's he? Said Latimer, it's my name. Food. There's food on the floor. Hmm? There's food on the floor. Food? Where? Said there's food on... I'm weak, so weak. If I can prop myself up on one arm. That voice said there's food on the floor. The girl hasn't moved. Girl? I'll get the food before those voices take it. If I can slide off this... this bed. I see it. 
bread on the floor, just like the voice said. It's my bread. Who's she? Woman. She's looking at my bread. My bread. Don't they remind you of starving uh, animals, Warren? She's looking at me. Who is she? I'll, I'll get it before she can. Slide down off this couch. I, I, I can get it. My bread. I can touch it. It's mine. Sherwood. Sherwood. That's my name. My name is Sherwood. She knows my name. But she won't get the bread. Sherry. Sherry, dear. I'm so hungry. So hungry. Catherine. Catherine. My Catherine. She's hungry. Must feed her. She's hungry. Mm. Dear Sherry. Bread. Eat it. Bread. You eat. No. You first. Oh, pick up the bread, you babies. You think I'm going to feed you? Well, Warren, what's so funny? Nothing, sir. It may take a bit of tugging to get them apart like Mr. Shake. But that don't look like a death struggle to me. Nothing like it. You have just heard the first presentation in the new NBC dramatic series, Author's Playhouse. Tonight's story was Stephen Vincent Benet's Elementals, especially dramatized for Author's Playhouse by Charles Gussman. Fern Persons was heard as Catherine Vane, John Hodiak as Sherwood Latimer, Arthur Cole as John Slick. Others in the cast were Lorette Philbrandt, Catherine Card, Michael Romano, Nelson Olmstead, and Bob Jellison. The original musical score was written and directed by Rex Moffin. Next week, a gripping story of the southern swamplands by an American master of suspense and narrative power, Snake Doctor by Irvin S. Cobb. Author's Playhouse has come to you from our Chicago studios. This is the National Broadcasting Company.